Here are three things that I'll explain to you that will help you to not start a business in a weekend. Now, I know that a lot of gurus out there are talking about you know, speed and that you can go from idea to market in literally no time, but I'm gonna show you three things that will help you not start a, a business in a weekend, but actually start help you start a business that will be there for you for months, years, and decades to come, and that you make sure that you're going to actually do it right. So look, if this is your first time in the channel, welcome, consider subscribing. Also, drop your comments below, and let us know what more you'd like to see from this channel, or if you have any questions. So the very first thing that I have on that board is idea and research. You see, oftentimes we come up with great ideas, and this is actually something that I'm gonna be making another video about, talking about how I go about decision making. But it's really important that when you get new ideas, whether if it's about a new business or about something to add to your business, to kind of just kick it off in the future and just kind of let it go do its thing and not even write it down because you're gonna realize that 60 to 80% of the ideas that we get are usually not that good. But when you start getting ideas and then you want to act on it, it's really important that you put adequate research. That's very important. And I call this thing the discovery mode and, or the discovery uh, kind of timeline, right? Which is another video that I'll be making as well, explaining in depth what I mean. But just to kind of describe it briefly, it's where you go in and, and research and try and attempt at a business or a new venture or something that you want to do and simply go in and look at all the intricate things and all the ins and outs that have to do with that particular business. What do I need to do in order for me to succeed in that business? Now, it's very important for you not to overanalyze anything that you do and not to uh, 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 simply overthink it because oftentimes what happens is, you know, when we overanalyze things, be, we become paralyzed with, uh, uh, um, with trying to take you know, and make decisions and move forward and we just simply lose interest and all of a sudden it's been six months and we haven't done anything because we've kind of gotten in the weeds of things and we just haven't figured out how to start or haven't even started. What you want to do is you want to just do some research, get the basics of how to get started, get started, but you need to trust yourself that you're going to just figure it out as you go. So that's number one, it's idea, research, and then actually implementation. Speed is very important here, but you want to make sure that you actually give it adequate time before you get things going. The second thing is capital, and that's really important. I hear and see a lot of comments and a lot of people talking about, I wanna start this business, but I just don't have money. I wanna start this thing, I don't wanna, you know, I wanna start selling on Amazon, but BJK University says that I need $10,000 in order for me to start. And I don't have anything. I have $500, I have $2,000. I wanna start this business and it needs 20,000 and I only have 3,000, what do I do? Well, you have to understand is, you personally do not need to have money in order for you to start a business or a venture or do anything. Because there is this thing called OPM, other people's money. And if you look at all the huge institutions, if you look at Amazon and you go back 25, 30 years ago, Jeff Bezos gave away 20% in exchange for $1 million to investors because he needed to raise a million to do his next thing, right? And he, what he simply did is he gave a few percentages to 20 different people, uh, or I'm sorry, he gave, he, I, th I wanna say he gave away 10% uh, um, for exchange of one million, so he gave half a percent to 20 different people. And those people are now billionaires. And if you're asking, but I am a nobody, why will someone actually listen to me? Why will somebody actually invest their money in my idea? Well, because there are a lot of people that have high paying jobs like doctors, lawyers, engineers that make five, 10, 20, $30,000 a month and they don't need all that to live, right? They live pretty modestly or they just have savings accounts. And after years and decades, they have tens of thousands, some of them hundreds of thousands sitting in the bank and they don't know any better to go invest it and their money is just simply collecting dust. So if you approach them and say, hey, Mr. You know, potential investor, I've got an idea and it can make this much in the future. Why don't you bring your money, put it in, I will put in the work, and I will bring you in as an investor. You can be a, a silent partner where you invest X amount of money for X amount of percentage in my business, and I run it because I have the blueprint, because I've done my research, I've found a blueprint, and I found a step-by-step -step process on how I can make this thing successful, right? Or you could simply borrow money. There is credit cards, there are loans, there are you know friends and family, um, you can even do a uh, Kickstarter where you simply have an idea if you have an invention 
and you want to just you know uh, 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 raise some capital, I'm pretty sure you all have heard of the term raising capital, and that's pretty much what it is. You know, you raise capital to start a venture, you raise capital to grow a venture, you raise capital to sustain a venture. It's a thing that people do all the time. You just have to think outside of the box. And one thing, one phrase that I have literally gotten from the book "Poor Dad, Rich Dad" um, is he says, "Do not." He says his rich dad always thought about things and said, "Do not say I cannot afford it when you get approached by things that you want and just simply cannot afford it, but say, how can I afford it?" Because when you say I cannot afford it. What you're doing is you're shutting down your brain. Your brain doesn't even want to think about it anymore. And it just moves on to the next thing because it creates excuses for itself. But when you say, how can I afford it? You open up potential in your brain. You simply open up possibilities. And then you start thinking about all those things that are possible. Our brains are very underutilized. But when you actually spend some time inside of your mind, and allow it to do its thing, you're gonna realize that it's a machine. It's an amazing, very sophisticated, awesome machine that is very underutilized, and we honestly are just really underutilizing it. Now look, if you're enjoying this content so far, please do me a favor and smash that thumbs up button, and also let us know in the comments what you'd like to see from this content uh, from this channel in the future. And if you haven't, be sure to subscribe as well. But the last thing is work. It's actually putting in the work and staying disciplined to making sure that you actually see the entire thing through. I say, rule of thumb, you should have in mind a minimum of 12 to 24 months to invest in any brand new venture. And this is why it's very important for you to go in that discovery phase. Because what you wanna do is you wanna figure out a thing that say you spend six months in discovery phase and you figure out one thing that you resonate with and you kind of enjoy doing. What you wanna ask yourself is the following question. If I go for two years minimum, well, actually before that question, the first question is, am I okay with going for a minimum of 12 to 24 months and dropping everything else? So I only focus on this one thing and I then this one thing only for the next 12 to 24 months. If the answer is yes, then ask yourself the second question. If after two years, this thing goes nowhere and I have to completely drop it and cut my losses and move on, will I regret the last two years? If the answer is yes, then go for it. If the answer is no, then keep going in that discovery phase until you find that one thing. But if you've gone through a couple dozen things and you haven't found that one thing, then you're just being too picky. And you want to make sure that you start somewhere and not just keep procrastinating and not just keep pushing things forward or to the side and not starting somewhere. And again, you don't need to know every single thing about everything. You just need to know enough to get started, but you have to trust yourself and always ask yourself, how can I afford it? Not, I cannot afford it. How can I make it happen? Not, I cannot make it happen. How can I find an investor? Not, well, I am nobody. Well, no one can, will give me money. Why would someone trust me? You know, I'm 18 years old. I'm 75 years old. It doesn't matter. You have to believe in yourself. If you want other people to believe in you, you have to believe in you first. Because if you don't believe in you, how are others going to believe in you? So again, just a quick recap. The very first thing is research. Going in that discovery phase, finding that one thing, doing enough adequate research. It's very important that product to uh, 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 to market is very, you know, it's quite fast, but you also put adequate time. You don't need to know everything. You just should know enough to get going and then figuring out as you go. The second thing is capital because anything you do needs money, right? So raising capital, if you don't have the money, no problem. Start with your closest people, friends, family, mom, dad, brother, sister, son, daughter, right? And then go to outside investors, take people out to lunch, take people out to dinner, uh, uh, pitch your idea and, and simply figure out a budget, figure out, okay, I need $20,000 to make this happen. I need first 10,000 and then five and then five and then lay out a, a plan and then stop thinking about, well, no one will trust me. Why would, well, you know, why will someone give me money? Because people will give you money. There is money out there. And then the third thing is putting in the work and asking yourself, am I going to be disciplined enough to drop everything and focus on this one thing for 12 to 24 months? Anything less than that is insane. If you're looking for fast, and I know Instagram and YouTube influencers are making things look like with you know, $2,000 and three months you're gonna become a millionaire. That's no thing, it just doesn't exist. It's not a thing. So stop looking for shortcuts and the quick thing. 
Look for the sure thing and the long term because everything that's worth having happens over time and you have to be disciplined and focused on it. So the third thing is making sure that you're gonna stay disciplined for 12 to 24 months minimum. And then the second question you wanna ask yourself is, if it fa fails after two years, because it's very possible that it won't go anywhere, and I've given it everything, and it's not, I've been working on it five hours per week, it's I've been working on it every single waking moment for the last two years, and it hasn't gone anywhere, it's probably time to pull the plug. Not after six months, not after three months, after two years of giving it your all. And if then it hasn't gone anywhere, then you want to cut your license and then move on to the next thing. And then if you've tried three things and you've wasted the last five years, that's fine. I always say, I never lose. I either win or I learn. So the last five years that you've wasted or you think you've wasted, you've actually gained a ton of experience and a ton of value that in your future ventures, you will simply implement because I've launched nine businesses, seven of which completely failed over the course of a decade. And only my last two have actually succeeded. But if, if, it, if it wasn't for the experiences that I had in the last decade in my previous seven businesses, those two would not have succeeded. So it's very important that you take those steps. Outside of that, thank you all for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. Smash the thumbs up button because it helps us in the algorithm. And let us know in the comments what you would like to see more from this channel. Outside of that, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.